Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to take a master board and we're going to make a fold up flip card. So a while back I made this fold up flip book and we're going to follow the first couple steps of how I made this, but this one has little uh, inserts and it's got little pockets, but I won't be doing any of that because I'm making not a book, but a card. You could take the steps that we're doing and do it on an art journal page or even on a canvas. So step number one, we are going to create a master board. Now this is 11 by 17 regular thin copy paper and because I want to easily blend the colors on here and give the paper some extra strength, I'm going to gesso it. And the fastest way I know how to get gesso on there is to brayer it on. Now, we're going to do a master board on both sides of this paper. Although, in a lot of cases, I'm only going to be showing you when I do it on one side, but we're doing the exact same thing. Now I am using a newfound color combo, cadmium red and brilliant purple. They're both from Liquitex Basics. Now the funny thing about these colors is each of them on their own aren't something that I work with often or like. And typically I was I was just actually trying to get rid of these colors so I didn't have them in my stash and they weren't taking up valuable space. And then I mixed them. It was a happy little accident because OMG, do I ever love the hues that come out when I mix these two paints. So once the gesso is dried on both sides, I am using the block and blend technique of mixing the paint right on the paper with a makeup sponge. Because it's gessoed, it's easy to blend and I want to be able to have that blendability. I'm also blending in a little bit of white gesso here and there. I'm working quite quickly. I'm not overthinking it. And I'm not too worried that it looks patchy in places because I know I'm going to be turning this into a master board and I'm going to do some stenciling and some stamping. Now, yes, some master boards have collage papers that you glue down and layer up and they can be quite thick, but because I'm making this into a fold up flip card, I don't want that extra bulk. So I'm just going to make my master board by stamping and stenciling. Look at these lovely colors. I am just so in love with this color combination. I think I might end up buying more of this paint just to mix it up. So I'm going to give this a dry and then I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Once both sides are colored and dried, I'm moving on to the stenciling portion. This is the Ripple stencil and I'm using the cadmium red. All my stenciling, I'm going to use the same colors or a mixture of the colors that are already on there and maybe add some white and black. I just wanna add some interest to the background. I'm using stencils that have varying um, size and shapes. This is Garden Gate. And I'm using white. I wanna lighten this background up. I want it to look kind of frosty or ethereal and I always find that adding that white just adds. I picked this stencil because it has wider openings and right now the white part is really showing but I know I'm going to be doing some more stenciling on top and that's going to knock back some of this.
this stencil is screen view and I'm using the brilliant purple here and I'm targeting areas where I know it's going to show I'm layering on top of the white stenciling that I've done I'm going on the red areas I'm going on a variety of them and depending where it lands it's going to show up more or less and that's just going to give more variation and interest to your masterboard, to your background. Now, remember, a masterboard is just an artist created paper that you cut up and use for multiple purposes. It's no different than a background. Now, I want to add some black, and I'm adding black because I know what my next step is going to be. So I put the black paint on my five by seven gel plate and then I'm brayering on the black paint onto my script stencil. This is giving that little bit of black and I'll point out why later on to it. And it's a great way of getting, using those texture stamps to get a nice coat of paint on there. On your, and using your stamps. Now, just a reminder, if you use your stamps, use acrylic paint on your stamps, make sure you wash them because if you don't, it dries on there and you may actually ruin your stamps. Loving this. So now I'm going to go do all this stamping and stenciling on the flip side. Remember, everything I do on one side, I'm doing on the other side. Now I want to add some bling to this, so I'm going to splatter it with gold. And I'm getting a lot on my fan brush because I want big blops of it. I want big splatters this time, which means it's going to take big, a longer time to dry. So make sure you allot for the, time, the drying time before you move to the next side. So now I'm just doing the same steps on the other side and I've really, really sped this up. I'm stenciling and I'm pretty much following the same order, but you don't have to. You could also do the other side with different combination of stencils, same colors. It's really up to you. If you put them in a different order, you're going to get a slightly different effect. And that's how you can learn. If you're doing the same thing in two very close to close ways, you can decide and, and learn which way works best for you or which one you like the best, which is all part of the learning process. Wouldn't be we be great if we could all move this fast when we create? In total, this took me about an hour and a half to do. So the original fold out flip book was eight and a half by eight and a half square. And I'm going to make this one 11 by 11 square. It's 11 inches this way. And I'm going to go 11 inches that way. You just want a square size, a square shape, any size could do. But here's my plan. I want to use this stencil on my page so I want it big enough to take most of the stencil and that stencil is called trumpet daffodil and I'll link all the stencils in the description box below so I'm marking off 11 inches then I'm putting my metal ruler against it and I'm ripping it you could draw a line and cut it if that works best for you you just need to make sure when I'm doing it this way you just need to make sure that the metal ruler is press flat. This I can use for other things. It's just going to go in my stash. So what you want to do now to turn it into a fold up card is fold it exactly in half. Make sure the corners all match. You wanted it to get it as precise as possible. If it's a little off, no biggie. And then fold it into quarters. And again, use the bone folder, get a sharp 
fold. Look at those colors. And I'm folding it and folding it back and forth because you really want it to flip and fold. Now you want to cut one of those to the center score. You could mark it with a marker ahead of time if you wish, or just cut with scissors like I'm going to do. You can see where the fold is. And then it's gonna fold up like this. Now on the original one, there are pouches and I could put pouches, but because I'm using that stencil, I'm going for a different look. There's a circle in the middle of this stencil and I wanna line that up with the circle or the center of this square. So I'm just figuring out how I want the daffodil to look. keeping track of it in the center. I want, this card is going to be sent to a friend who's going through a life change, a, a difficult time, and I wanna send her some inspiration and, and helpful thoughts, I guess. And part of that is the message of blooming. So when this unfolds, I want it to say bloom, grow, so I'm using black acrylic paint on a makeup sponge. Now I'm dipping into the paint and then I pat it on my glass surface and then I stencil. Even if I want to keep this, keep this, I don't want globby paint on my makeup sponge because that'll seep under the stenciling and wreck your stenciling. So even if I have to go over it twice to get the level of pink color that I want, you're better off doing it that way than trying to speed it up by putting more paint on and then it seeps under. Now you'll notice that I tape down the stencil in places. I'm doing a lot of stenciling on this and I don't want the stencil to move. Here's why I wanted the black script in the background. I'm adding this in. This is going to be black and it's going to show up because there's a huge amount of contrast, but I wanted to have that black in the background so that everything works together. Here I'm just going over some areas that I think need more. And voila. Now this looks very dark, but I'm gonna take care of that. And then it folds up. Now I wanna put the same flower on the other side, but I, when it folds over like this in the process, I want it to match. So I want it to be exactly the same. So I'm folding up the one and doing the one quadrant like you just saw me doing. And then I'm going to do the other side. And this way I know it's exactly the same. So when it is flipping, it should match fairly closely. Albeit it still didn't, wasn't exact. So now I've done half of it. And now I'm just gonna line up the stencil where that half is and stencil the other side.
And there we have it. Making sure that everything is dry, folding, folding up. See, it's not quite perfect, but you know what? Close enough. I love rounded edges, so I'm using my corner punch, which I didn't know that I would use, but I'm, I reach for this quite frequently. And I'm just cutting all four corners just to make them rounded. And I'm doing that now before I add any details or shading or edging to my page. Folding and folding and folding. I want to make sure that my top one that is going to basically be the cover of my card is a nice. section. I want that one to be a little extra special. So that's what I'm flipping here. And that one is more of a nice pattern. So that's the way I'm going to do it. Now I want to brighten and lighten this up. So I grab my white Posca pen and I am outlining all those black areas very meditative doing doodling and the white Posca pen works really well it stays fairly opaque bright white of course nothing underneath this is water activated if it was watercolor or pigment powders that aren't permanent it may bleed through the white but this is all acrylic and it's dry now I'm not going to show you or make you sit through all my tracing. I'll come back and doing that, but I'm also going to lighten it by highlighting using my floating acrylic shading technique, highlighting and shading technique around it. And I'm using white because I want to lighten the page, but I want to make this center daffodil motif focal image stand out from the background. So I'm shading with it. I can come back and I do to build up the amount that I want on the sides. But it's a good idea. Put some down, let it dry and build it up over time. I could have left just the outlining or doodling in the middle part, and that looks quite nice. But I do doodle up every bit of that. Here I'm shading around and edging the page. And between the three things, this it has really lightened and brightened up. I'm loving the frosty look with this color combination. So I've sped up the video here and I'm going to show some more of the doodling that I do. I am not trying to be perfect by any extremes. I'm going not this fast, but I'm going fairly fast. And you can see how that just brightened everything up. Now I'm taking the white Posca pen and I'm drawing a line around the outside, just adding some of those details. Made a mess. The Posca pen, it's permanent when it's dry, but until it's dry, you can remove it with a baby wipe so you can fix any mistakes. adding a little bit more. Now I'm going to sentiments. I want to send good wishes and good thoughts to my friend. And so I went to my short and sweet sentiment pack and I made it bigger because I want it to stand out. And I picked something that was a bold font. So we have black and white, which are the contrasting colors to the pink and purple or the red and purple that I use. 
Now I'm just cutting up the sentiment and arranging it. Now remember how some of that flower when you folded it up didn't quite match? Because I'm putting the sentiments on, that's gonna distract the eye and basically hide those little errors. So I can put as many or as few of these positive messages on the quadrants. Any of the spaces that are opened, I could put a sentiment, a wish, or some thought that I want to send to my friend. Once I have them decided, I'm going to glue them down with my fluid matte medium. So if you were doing this, you could do what you see here could be one page of an art journal or one canvas. The other side could be another one. So you could follow the exact same steps that you've seen here and do it on there. Now I wanna keep track of the front. This is the front one. And I'm putting, imagine the possibilities as she rebuilds her life, as she moves forward in life. This is the overall message or theme of it. And then I blew that one up even bigger. This is my cover, so I wanted it to be different. So I made it bigger. And I said, imagine the possibilities. And that's the benefit of my sentiment packs. You can shrink them, you can blow them up to any size you need for whatever you're creating. ATCs, you're gonna shrink them down. Something that's this big, 11 by 11, you may want to make them bigger. So this could be one art journal page. Now I'm outlining with my black Posca pen all the sentiments. Doing that finishing, it's these little steps that really make a difference on your page, on your project. Adding some black dots in here. What, I don't doodle often or I haven't, but when I start, I just can't seem to stop. Then I add some dots on the cover one with my white Posca pen. And if you have a font that is bolder, you can definitely add some bling, some extra specialness to it by doing this. And there is our fold up card. Imagine the possibilities. So she opens it up and there's all these wishes for her. Loving the colors, loving the combination. I hope she likes it as much as I like it, liked doing it. This one's upside down. Oh, well, next time I will tape it and make sure that, that I don't do that, but or just let it go. So go try this color scheme. Go try making a flip up, fold up card or canvas. I have a couple extra pieces. These will be perfect for, I think one, I'm going to glue on these mini composition books. It'll be an Insta background. And the other, I think will be for the background on a six by six card. 
So nothing is wasted. Here are some pictures of the finished project. It does stand. And you can see the flower there. I hope you give the card a try, the color scheme a try, or something in the video that inspired you. Until next time, go get creative.